Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the MEMSOURCE training webinar for Translators Without Borders. I am Manuela Noske, and I'm the Community Manager at TWB. Uh, we're very excited to have as many of you joining us today as there are and you know, learn about how you can use the MEMSOURCE web editor to create and to edit your translations. As we had announced, we are uh, still using, uh, we, will be start, we will start using MemSource as our editor starting at the beginning of May. We don't have an exact date yet, uh, but we will you know, keep you posted on that and share with you what that date is as soon as we know. So at the moment, what we're demoing here today is not accessible for you yet. We're still in the old cut to TM, uh, but you know, we're offering this training today so that you feel ready when the time comes and we're switching over to MemSource in the early days of May. What we will cover in this webinar today are really the basics of the MemSource web editor, as well as how you can navigate from the Kato platform to MemSource. I will be demoing the first part, namely how to find a task on the Kato platform uh, that you're interested in working on, how to claim it, and then how to navigate to a MemSource. And then my colleague, Philip Niemetz, uh, who is the customer success manager at MemSource, will take over for me and will demonstrate the basics uh, of how you can work in the MemSource web editor. Before we start, we have a couple of housekeeping items here for you. First of all, all participants are muted and your video cameras are off. We will keep participants muted throughout the demo to cut down on any noise. There really are a lot of participants in this webinar. And you know we've all learned that uh, background noise can be very distracting, so we will keep you muted. But if you have any questions, please type them into the QA box. We are keeping an eye on all questions that come in and we will answer them at the end of the demo. So we will do our demo first and then we will get to your questions. But you know, don't be shy, start asking questions as soon as they occur to you. So they're in our QA box and we can begin to sift through them. Uh, we will try to get to as many questions as we have after the demo. Um, but you know, if, you, if there's something that is left unanswered, we will make sure that we're getting answers to your questions uh, in, uh, in the Kato community. And just so you know, we are recording the session and we will make a recording available to you just as soon as we can. Uh, and we will let you know where to find it uh, so you can refer back to it, uh, to the recording as you need to. Um, and without any further ado, um, let me, uh, start the demo. Give me one second here as I clear my... All right, so what you see here is something that you should be very familiar with. It is the login page for the Kato platform. And there's really no change to your procedure. There's no change for how you connect with us. You go to the login page, you click on login, and you will type in your credentials. So I'm going to use an avatar today, cut to tester, and I'm going to type in my password uh, and I'm going to log in this way. Now, some of you may be signing in with Google. Um, typically, you can certainly do that here. Whatever you've done in the past is what you can, will continue to do. And so once I click on login, the homepage will show up. Um, and here for today's demo, I am pretending that I am a English to Spanish translator. And um, so my settings are English to trans, uh, sorry, English to Spanish. Um, and so all the different tasks that I see here on this page are all tasks that are suitable for a Spanish translator. I'm scrolling down here to take a look at what there is. And there is one that is catching my attention uh, because it's got the word turnip in the title. And I'm curious about what TWB has to do with turnips. So I'm gonna click on this one. And um, this page comes up here. Um, and I scroll down, I take a look up here. There's 153 words that seems quite reasonable. What I want to do today is really just a small task. This task is as of yet unclaimed. That's great. Um, and um, 
So I decide that uh, I am interested in this and that I'm going to claim this task. So I click on claim task. Um, and now we have, you could almost call it like a double confirmation page here. You should be familiar with this. There's really nothing new. We've got you, you know, promising that you will be translating this file. So essentially you're just confirming, yes, I am going to do this. So I'll do that now for you. Yes, I promise I will translate this file. Uh, and that takes you to this page. And this is the one thing that has really changed or it will be changed for you in the future. This is where you typically click to, to start the translation process. And what it says here is translate using MemSource. That's new. For the majority of you, it still says translate using Cut2TM because that's what you're working with. But for the demo purposes, because we're demoing MemSource, and my piece of the UI here says translate using MemSource. And the only other thing you really need to do is click on here now and then the MemSource editor will open up. And we'll give this a second. All right, a um, couple of things uh, that I wanna say that have come up yesterday, because uh, this is the second time we're doing it. The way that I have shown um, you know, the navigation from Kato to MemSource is the only way you can log into MemSource. You do not need a separate MemSource account. You're TWB login credentials are all that you need to complete this process. You do not need a MemSource account. You do not need a MemSource login. You will always log into the Kato platform and from there you will navigate to MemSource. You don't need to actually um, you know, log into MemSource separately. Um, and with that, I'm going to quickly hand it over to my colleague, Philip. Um, and he will start sharing his screen. So Philip, it's over to you. Thank you, Manuela. And thank you everyone for uh, joining uh, this training. Uh, I would ask uh, Manuela, if you can kindly confirm that you can see my screen, that everything is okay. And then yes, we can, I can. start. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, great. Perfect. So uh, let me start with what you can see at the moment. Uh, I have claimed the task. And I can see there are some columns, there are two columns here. So what does it mean? Uh, since I'm translating from English to Spanish, uh, I can see on the left that there is the source text, the English text. So this is for me to know where does, where does this come from? And uh, I'm not expected to do anything, change anything in this column, in the source column. Uh, where I will be working is a target column. So this is Spanish. This is where I will be translating or editing. That depends on the type of the task. And uh, I should also mention that uh, down below those columns, you have something called in-context preview. This is useful for having an overview of how the document looks like in real life. Uh, there might not be preview with all of these documents because some of the documents don't have the necessary format, but let's say with uh, Microsoft Word documents or uh, InDesign documents, there will be a preview with uh, pictures if there are any and overview of the formatting. So this might be useful for you to see. And uh, also what you can do with this preview, it's interactive. So you can scroll down and when you click on a part of the text, let's say here, I'm pointed directly to the, to the respective segment in the editor. So I don't need to scroll down. I can just click the, the text and I'm pointed there. Uh, from this preview. So that's it, the preview. By the way, uh, you can see that this preview is a preview of translation, but I can also see the preview of, of the source text. If I'll, if I'll go here, uh, go to preview and uh, change target to source like this. So as you can see now, uh, I have English here. Let's change it back to uh, back to Spanish, which is which is the language I will translate into. 
Uh, so I will start with the first with the first segment here and what might be strange for you is that there is already some text present and this is like a real life scenario in most of the cases you will have or in in a lot of the cases at least you will have some text pre-filled here uh, where does this come from actually so this might come from translation memory uh, which is a database of already translated text. So the texts are reused and if something is same or similar, it will appear here. Or it might come from machine translation and uh, so on. There might be multiple resources involved. So let's talk a bit about those because this will help you a lot. Uh, you can see that there is, there is a number next to the segment and it says 100. And also it's in it's in green color. So uh, what does it mean here is that this is a 100% translation memory match. Wow, this this sounds might sound terrific uh, or, or terrifying, but but uh, it's easy. It means that somewhere uh, in the translation memory in the database, there is a text uh, already existing translation of this segment, which is exactly the same. Uh, so somebody in the past has translated this, uh, saved it into the translation memory, and now you can reuse it. Uh, I can also check more on, on the resources here in so-called cat panel. So this is where I'm pointing right now here. Uh, so the first uh, thing you can see, it's the 100 a person translation memory match. Uh, that's okay. And below, I can also see some uh, some kind of a metadata here. So, what is the translation memory name? And when I hover with my mouse over metadata, I can see uh, previous or next segment if applicable. Then, uh, what I can see as well is uh, the match from machine translation. So there might be some translation projects you will be working on where the machine translation will be enabled. And this will be shown as a blue, uh, in a blue color and, uh, and letters empty. So you know that this comes from machine translation. And uh, let's talk a bit about some other resources. You can see that we have some uh, yellow square and, and red square here. What, what does those mean? So I've been talking about resources. We had translation memory and machine translation, but there is another kind of, of a resource which will help you in your work. And this is term-based. You might also know it from other tools as a glossary. What does it do? Uh, it uh, recommends you uh, correct terminology, which is uh, in this case, you can see the yellow yellow one. So turnip, it's highlighted and should be uh, translated as Navo. So this is the terminology coming from the glossary, coming from the term base. So I can see I this has been already used in a translation, so it's okay. And the red, uh, red one, red square on the other hand, is telling you never use this term as a translation. So you can see Rava is forbidden in this case and I should never translate it in such way. This is especially important with, let's say, medical uh, translation where really the, the correct terminology is crucial, uh, but also some other, some other topics. So, uh, the terminology most probably will appear uh, within some within some of the segments here while you are working. So, just to uh, shortly recapitulate this uh, resources like translation memories, which is a database of already translated text, or machine translation, or term base might appear. Uh, the text might be pre-translated with those. And also, 
uh, you can see more on, on resources in CAT panel on the right side. So after we know about resources, we can uh, we can continue with with work. So uh, let's say I'm uh, I'm content with uh, what I see here, and uh, this translation is okay for me. I don't want to perform any change in this. So what I need to do now is to confirm the segment. Thus, the translation is confirmed and can be saved into translation memory. So what I will do. Uh, you can see my mouse uh, here uh, on the small red cross. So I will click it and thus confirm the segment, the translation. And I'm pointed to the next segment where I can see again a resource, translation memory match, but here it's different than in a previous segment. So the number is telling me 92 and uh, the color is also different so what what does that mean that means that somewhere in in the database in translation memory there is a text which is almost the same as this segment but there are there is some difference and you should be definitely careful about this so when there is a difference most probably you will need to change something or add something to translation and uh, what exactly I can also check in the cat panel. So you can see uh, here uh, that Iceland uh, is missing from 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 the translation memory. So uh, I should uh, I should add Iceland into the list uh, list of the countries in uh, in my translation. So I will do that now. Uh, so this and now this should be better so always check for uh if, if you have a so-called fuzzy match those are the matches below below 100 percent what exactly is missing or what is what is different uh in in a translation memory let's say i'm happy with this segment as well so i'll confirm it Okay, and here we have we have another one. This is just a simple number, and the resource we haven't talked about is non-translatable. Is Memsource AI-powered feature which uh, detects non-translatable segments? What does it mean? Those are mostly numbers or names uh, which don't need to be translated. So uh, you can get a match like this. It's again 100, but it's underlined. So when when you have uh, underlined uh, underlined score here, it comes from non-translatable. And uh, since this is 100, that means Memsource is pretty sure this is non-translatable. You shouldn't translate it. There could be also 99% match where this says, okay, most probably this is non-translatable, but please check it. So. Okay, uh, these were the non-translatables. I confirmed the segment as well. And you can see here in this segment, there, there are certain specifics. So first of all, we have 101 as, as a translation memory match. So this indicates that it's, I, I would say like a, like a super match because uh, it means that, uh, uh, the previous and the next segment are are the same uh, this is in context so the text is the same as in translation memory but also the previous and the next segment are the same and that means that uh, you can be pretty pretty safe that this this shouldn't be changed but still uh, read through this uh, so you're 100 percent sure uh, so most probably no no work to be done. And uh, another strange uh, thing which appears here are those numbers in blue fields. Uh, we call them tags. Uh, what they are doing here, uh, there uh, they indicate that there is either something specific about formatting, or there is some piece of code behind. And it's something you don't need to translate and you don't need to really 
care about. But what you need to care about is that in the in the target text, those tags are placed. So uh, if we have two tags here, two tags should be also in, in target in a similar manner. Uh, how to do that if we don't have any translation memory match? So let me delete this segment and show you how to insert tags. Uh, so either you can go to uh, edit tags and insert tag or insert all tags. Uh, so I can insert tag here and voila, you can see we have a tag inserted. Uh, you can see there are also some, some keys uh, on, on the right side. So what does it mean? You can use keyboard shortcuts for many of the actions you can do in, uh, in the editor. So let's say I want to insert tag and I don't want to go with my mouse here to tags, insert tag, but I would like to do it in a quicker way. So I will press F8 and I get I get the tag here, so I don't need to, you know, click too much. So this this is helpful. Please use the uh, keyboard shortcuts. Those will uh, those will speed up your your work. Uh, I think I should also mention uh, the possibility of insert all tags. So right now all of the tags are in uh, in the segment. So these were the tags. Uh, let's let's move on. Uh, I confirm this segment. I confirm this segment. Uh, okay, here you can see the number of the translation memory match is sixty three, which means it's not a very good translation memory match, and it, like most probably you would need to change it heavily. Uh, I, I won't do this because we are during during the uh, during the demo, so we don't have much time for that. But please be aware: the lower number in the match, the more changes uh, the segment will require. Uh, now, uh, in the next segment, uh, let me show you another tool which can help you uh, in your life. So we had keyboard shortcuts, which are really helpful. And uh, now I, I will show you auto auto correct feature, uh, or no, not auto correct sorry uh, auto uh, auto suggestions. Uh, so what happens now? I have I have a blank segment here, and I start typing, uh, and you can see that I get I get suggestion automatically. So where does this suggestion come from? Again, it comes from translation memory. And this helps me uh, speeding up the process because I don't need to type the whole uh, word. Uh, what I can do, I can just uh, select the suggestion. Here in this case is just one. So yeah, that's okay. And press the tab on my keyboard and that's it. Uh, I got this word pre-filled with the, with the next one. It's, it's more helpful. So I can see I have segundo here and I don't need to type the whole, whole word. I can press again tab here and uh, the word gets pre-filled from the translation memory. So that's it. Uh, so that was uh, that was auto suggestion. Another thing you might do uh, in your work is to search for a word and replace it. So let's say you you translated the whole document and suddenly you realized, okay, uh, this this word in English should have more appropriate translation uh, than than I've made, and I would like to to change all, all of those words. And the document might not be as short as this one I'm showing you, but there might be uh, like 100, 100 of segments. So it's definitely not comfortable to go segment by segment, search for the word, but you can search uh, for it in uh, in this field. So it's, it's called filters. So let's say I want to uh, search for Nabo. So let me, let me do this and I can see all the segments where Navo is 
present. And uh, let's say I would like to replace it with something else. So I will click those two small arrows on, on the right side uh, and replace. So what I, can, uh, what I can see is the replace field. So I would like to replace it uh, with Mansana, which is not a great translation, but again, uh, it's for training purposes. So uh, I will, uh, I can replace just one, the, the first uh, instance or one by one, or I can replace all of the instances of the word man, uh, Nabo to Mansana. So let me do that. And you can see that right now I have replaced all. So this is, uh, this is search and replace. Uh, now what I would like to do, I, I have again changed my mind and I would like to revert the change I've just done, the, the replacement. Uh, I could again type in Mansana here and, and Nabo here, which is like, okay, you could do that. But the easier way is to use the undo tool. And it's very similar to other CAD tools or Microsoft Word. Whenever you do something uh, and you would like to change this action back, you can use undo. So what I would do, I would go here uh, and, and press this button and this reverts the change I've done back. So no worries if you uh, if you do something you're not happy with you can you can undo this change. Let me let me clear the filter and uh, go back. So now uh, we know about resources. We know about auto suggest. We also know how to search and replace or undo. So um, I think. Uh, the time has come uh, for me to, uh, to finish and deliver the translation. So one important point I'd like to make is that you cannot, you cannot uh, complete the job and complete the translation unless uh, all of these segments are confirmed. So there shouldn't be any, any red cross uh, in uh, in my editor, uh, I will I will deselect this. And what I can do to um, to check this and also check the other possible errors I have made, like punctuation or or tags or or spelling. For this, we have a tool uh, here inside of the editor. We call it QA. So if I press the QA, uh, I can uh, run the job QA here. And I can see the, the errors. Uh, so the mem source is screening through the translation I've made and points out the possible errors. So here in the segment number three, I can click it and it points me here, there directly. Uh, there is not confirmed segment and also un unedited, ah, okay, unedited fuzzy match. So I, I will confirm this. Uh, unedited TM fuzzy match. Well, I don't think we need to talk about the, about the QA error specifically because there is quite a lot of them. Let me just open the, the small menu with, with all of the errors uh, Memsource can, can search for. And there might be actually even more. It depends on, on the settings the project manager has uh, set up for this specific project. So as you can see, there might be a lot of error types. The most important from my point of view, at least are terminology. So if terminology is, is forbidden or, or missing, it's definitely important error. And tags, uh, this, is, this is again tags and uh, segment not confirmed. So these are like the three most important error types you can have. So the QA, uh, if let's say you think that this error is not, not an error actually, uh, it might happen, uh, especially with spelling, or you, you just don't want to, to be bothered with this, you can press ignore here. So uh, when I press this, uh, the error gets ignored 
but ideally I should I should resolve the error, not ignore it. So again, I can see here uh, we have uh, we have not confirmed segment, so I will confirm it and yeah target identical with source I think in this case is appropriate so I will press ignore here. So this was the QA quality assurance a tool which will help you uh, to spot for any errors you you might have in your translation. Uh, from the other tools you can also use it's the the more panel and uh, this will let me let me show you so in case you're mm, you know some other languages as well or in case let's say you have translation from English to European Spanish but uh, there might be also some some text previously translated to uh, Mexican Spanish then you might use this feature to your benefit it's it's uh, under more panel and it will show you matches for the same same segment in other languages uh, you're interested in so let's say I'm interested in Italian let's say I know Italian and this would help me with my translation so I can select it here and press show matches and I can see that there is actually some match here uh, I can use a, as a reference for my translation so that's that's another tool uh, you can use uh, from uh, from the features there are actually quite a lot of them and I definitely don't want to um, really bother you with with each every single feature the editor has but at least one I should definitely uh, tell you about it's split and join segment so if I'll select the segment here what I can do I can split or join segments uh, I'm not sure if I will be allowed to do no I'm not uh, so in many cases you won't be allowed to uh, to split and join segments but there might be projects where you're allowed to do this and uh, the use case is that let's say the document uh, came in excel format and uh, the segmentation rules uh, somehow split one sentence into two segments shouldn't happen but might happen it's it's very rare but this really might happen so in this case you could join the two segments but in general I don't think in 99% of cases you won't come across this and most probably it would be the project managers who will take care of this so if the segmentation wouldn't be all right this would be uh, this would be fixed by project managers on translators without borders side uh okay and now i think i think that's it uh we came across uh all the main uh, main features and, and the translation process how how uh, you will use um, uh, the editor uh, now what's the last thing you should do uh, when you're done with the translation there is a complete button here so you will press complete and there is again pop-up window like job cannot be edited once set to completed so be careful about this if you're not sure that something is translated correctly please go through once again and if you're sure then you press complete job and your your work is done here uh, i i won't press it now because the time has come for the q a session uh, and i would like to show you uh, or answer answer the questions with the editor so I won't complete the job right now but as as for me as as for the as for the training itself that's all and let's proceed 